Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Futurum Tech Webcast. And today we're very pleased to have Joel Brand of Marvell Technologies join us as we look into examining Marvell's key role in advancing ORAN innovation across the 5G ecosystem. And before you know, we get into it, I'd like to uh, provide the reminder that uh, today's conversation is for educational purposes only and is not to be construed as investment advice in any way whatsoever. And so with that, Joel, how are you today? How's it going? I'm good. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, very pleased. And yeah, this is an opportunity to tell us more about yourself and your role at Marvell Technologies. I'm looking after the uh, wireless uh, business of the processor business unit at, uh, at Marvell. I, uh, I've been involved in, uh, in the wireless industry since the early days when uh, CDMA and GSM were duking it out for uh, world dominance. Seems like about uh, 100 years ago or something like that. Um, and I've been, I've been fortunate enough to go through the different uh, generations of uh, wireless technologies, and it's been a pleasure. Yes, uh, I've seen the same evolution of our industry. And so, yes, you're definitely the right person to talk about ORAN. And let's start with that, ORAN technology itself, and you know, why it is so important to the future of 5G. And that is, in other words, you know, why is the open interface approach of ORAN so critical to attaining you know, the top priority outcomes that operators emphasize. And this includes spurring ecosystem-wide 5G innovation and developing applications uh, through the, you know, the mixing and matching of solutions uh, from suppliers. Uh, what's your perspective? It, it is critical. It's it's utmost important the the open the open interfaces, and, and it's not specific to five G. It's it's more mm -hmm. general to the uh, the telecom and the wireless ecosystem at large. The the operators are desperately needing innovation. They need the ability to replicate what has been successfully built on the internet. If, if you look at the TCP IP networking industry, if you look at the software industry, it, it's all built around open APIs, uh, development tools, protocol stacks that are very well layered, uh, even open source uh, communities that have, have flourished. And, and the, um, the telecom ecosystem has not had the opportunity to, uh, to leverage and enjoy that. When, when, you, when you built uh, the environment in such uh, bite-sized pieces, a lot of newcomers, new uh, companies can come in because you, you essentially lower the barrier of entry for new innovative companies and you allow the ecosystem to innovate uh, faster where not every company needs to build everything that Nokia has built over the last 200 years. They can build a small piece of it and contribute that to the, to the ecosystem. And that's what will spur the, uh, the evolution and the innovation in the new telecom network once we are able to institutionalize all the uh, ORAN interfaces out there. Yeah, I think that's very important. Clearly, uh, 5G in itself is important, and it also must uh, interwork and coexist with uh, 4G technologies, cloud technologies, and so forth. And so, yes, uh, this is, I think, uh, very important to know as we you know, explore you know, why ORAN technology is so important. And I think this really does give us the level set to look more into the Marvell portfolio itself. And that is, can you describe the Marvell ORAN platform solution in reference to the silicon software and hardware, hardware reference designs? And, and how does the Marvell approach uh, differ from alternatives that are out there in the market? Yeah, I, I appreciate the question. Um, so so Marvell is, is very unique in the sense that this is the only merchant silicon available today for 5G radio access network processing. The, the alternative to that is, is to use a, a custom ASIC. Um, 
but but in terms of of merchant silicon something that is available uh, off the shelf today if you want to develop your own uh uh protocol stack particularly the physical layer for for 5g uh, this is this is the only uh, available available solution and Marvel has differentiated it uh, uh, on, on that o- on top of that we obviously built an extensive uh, software capabilities to allow customers to use the uh, the capabilities of the silicon in the most efficient way to integrate uh, with uh, again standard off the shelf environments that are widely available on the on the internet um We've, we've built around it reference designs, as, as you pointed out, um, and we've built around it a, a VRAN, virtual radio access network solution, by taking the silicon and putting it on a, on a PCIe board, a, and that allows our customer to start enjoying the, uh, the benefits of uh, you know, bringing the cloud and the RAN, the radio access network, uh, closer together and starting to leverage uh, commercial off the shelf Server hardware in order to run the um, the five G RAN network from uh, from possibly lower cost hardware. Yeah, and that's a very valuable insight. I, I see the industry definitely uh, warming up more uh, to the approach, and I think it also gives us the opportunity to drill down more into you know what makes ORAN work, what makes it so special, and that is, uh, can you? Talk about more about the rationale behind ORAN disaggregation of the RU, DU, and CU capabilities, and uh, even uh, uh, equally important, how does Marvell's solution map across uh, this architecture? Yeah, we, we have more acronyms in this industry than we can count, right? <laughs> RU, DU. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so the, the concept is actually very, very simple. It, it, the acronyms make it sound complicated, but the idea is to uh, find the right balance between how uh, how uh, capable the transport network, the network that uh, that connects uh, your core network to the to the tower, to the uh, you know the towers in the field, uh, the, the balance between that and the complexity of the equipment on the tower. In, in general. What you want is to have uh, a transport network that doesn't need to transport too much, that the requirements are to transport less, to transport it slower, because the more you're asking to transport more and the more you're asking for lower latency transport, the more expensive that transport becomes. You, you cannot use maybe millimeter wave backhaul, but instead you have to use fiber when you put very uh, um, difficult requirements on the transport. Uh, on the other hand, you're trying to uh, simplify the equipment on the tower. The, the more complicated that is, the more maintenance it requires, the more expensive it is, the larger it is. Um, and, and the idea is the more we can simplify it, we need more transport because then we will do more of the processing in the back end. The more we complicate the equipment on the tower, we would reduce the complexities on the transport. And that balance is what the split of RUDUCU is designed to, uh, to address. From a Marvel perspective, we are providing solutions for the RU, where a lot of the uh, low-fi FFT, IFFT, and beamforming is, uh, is done for massive MIMO uh, radios. We provide solutions for the DU, where most of the uh, physical layer of the protocol stack is uh, processed. And we provide solutions for the CU, where a lot of uh, TCP IP networking and uh, uh, encryption and security functions are offered. Um, that's our, our uh, Oction uh, product line. And on the radio and the DU, it's our Oction Fusion product line. And that's yeah, very insightful. Uh, this is a, a great explanation, Joel. Uh, what we see is uh, the uh, operators prioritizing the ability to use disaggregation to align the network to support specific use cases to really enable them to meet the specific needs of customers and naturally uh, monetize it in a more flexible way. And I think uh, this uh, provides the opportunity to you know look at uh, the market 
uh, from a different uh, perspective. And that is, uh, can we uh, look at the general purpose processes that are deployed today and perhaps explain you know, why general purpose processors are suboptimal in handling the majority of 5G physical layer one functions? And uh, also, uh, do these same limitations apply to the ORAD architectures themselves? Yeah, G general processors are, are important and we all use them on our laptops and, and, and many other places. Um, but, but the 5G physical layer processing cannot be done in a, in a general purpose processor. And, and it doesn't really matter if, uh, if this is a, a VRAN architecture, an O-RAN architecture, a traditional radio access network, uh, a distributed architecture. It, it doesn't really matter. A, a general purpose processor was designed for general purpose. It's like it's like using a general purpose car. My uh, my Honda is not ideal for transporting uh, a, a king size bed. For that, I better use a truck, or if I want to race, I better use a race car. Mm -hmm. um, you you want you want something specialized when you're trying to perform a specialized function, and the five G physical layer is a very specialized function. We we just need to envision the complexity of that, right? We, we are trying to counter the effects of the air interface between the tower and the mobile phone. And, and users are holding the phones, sometimes in their pocket, sometimes uh, next, next to their ear. Um, sometimes they are driving. There are many users that each tower needs to, uh, needs to handle. And, and there are trees and rain and, and all kinds of other things that are interfering with the transmission between the tower and the mobile user. And, and we need to counter that. We, we've, we've built a very, very complicated math in order to be, be able to counter the effects of that uh, air interface. And that's what the physical layer is all about. And because of that complexity, a dedicated silicon is required in order to handle the physical layer. A general purpose processor simply cannot do that. And again, that's true for VRAN, ORAN, or any other types of uh, radio access network. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's, I think, a uh, well-established trend, uh, something that is simply essential, that uh, we need specialized processors for infrastructure processing, and that we simply have moved beyond using general processors, uh, certainly for you know, these applications and uh, capabilities. And uh, I think this also uh, leads into uh, revisiting the Marvell Octian Fusion uh, product line. And that is, you know, what makes a product line so uh, different and so uh, purpose design for fulfilling, you know, these infrastructure processing demands, especially, you know, for layer one requirements in uh, any ORAN network out there. Yeah, it's it's a it's a delicate balance, right? We talked about the need for uh, for openness, open interfaces, mm -hmm. APIs, which will spur innovation. In. We also talked about the need for a very specialized silicon to handle the the complexity of the math for the physical layer of uh, of five G. And, and what's unique about the Oction Fusion uh, product line is that it brings those two together very, very successfully and uniquely. Uh, it allows our customers, the, the OEMs who build equipment for the, uh, the wireless telecom networks, to, to use off-the-shelf standard merchant silicon that has dedicated set of accelerators to, to deal with the, uh, with the complex math. At the same time, it has open interfaces that allow them to innovate and differentiate. So, so, so two customers of ours can develop very different protocol stacks that have different capabilities because what we do, we provide the underlying accelerators for 5G and provide open interfaces to use those accelerators in different ways and innovate and build solutions that are competitive in the market. Yes, and I think that uh, differentiation is coming across uh, quite clearly. I think uh, that it's important uh, for you know the industry to understand uh, that when you have silicon, 
you really need it to align with your very specific uh, requirements. And uh, it's just no longer acceptable to really, you know, have to have silicon uh, that is adopted, and then it just doesn't really uh, conform to what you really need. And I think that's a very valuable takeaway and, you know, explaining what is so uh, distinct and, and different about the Mar uh, Marvel Aktion line. And uh, so with that, I think it's also important to understand what else does the Marvel Octane line, Octane line bring uh, to the market. And can you talk about you know, how Octane Fusion avoids trade-offs in features and performance, and at the same time support the open scalability of ORAN and uh, VRAN technologies as well? Yeah, maybe we should address this question in the context of virtual RAN, uh, which is kind of the, the, the talk mm -hmm. of the town nowadays. Um, in the context of, uh, of VRAN, um, the idea is to use commercial off-the-shelf server hardware and, and use these accelerators to run the physical uh, layer uh, for, for the 5G, again, again because of the, uh, of the complexity. And, and what we have done, again, uniquely, we've built a, a dedicated silicon, but we've used an architecture that mirrors the cloud architecture that is ubiquitously deployed for TCP IP networking. So, so if you look at, at the cloud environment, they, they've had to deal with a similar issue around uh, IPsec. Networking. Mm -hmm. A lot of the traffic is is encrypted, protected, using uh, IPsec, and, and and there was a need to offload that type of traffic off servers, and the approach was eventually to use uh, DPUs or smart NICs, mm -hmm. where where there are standard interfaces to communicate with these devices, network interface cards, and offload a big portion of the uh, of the protocol stack processing. What, what we've done, we've mirrored that architecture. We are, we are bringing essentially a, a cloud native architecture to the radio access network uh, environment by mirroring that, by developing instead of a smart NIC for IPsec, we are developing a RAN NIC, RAN network interface card that allows you to offload the 5G processing stack such that you don't need to offload the server. And by doing that, we are avoiding the trade-offs that are natural in a, in a standard general purpose CPU environment. Yeah, that's a great insight. Uh, that, I think that's a very valuable tutorial you provided there, Joel, in understanding the, the VRAN dimension and how it definitely interplays with uh, ORAN architecture builds and adoption, and certainly uh, Marvell's role in all of this uh, dynamic development and what is going to be important in advancing uh, the overall 5G ecosystem. And uh, with that, uh, that I think wraps up uh, the main uh, points of our conversation today. I want to thank Joel for spending time with us. And hopefully this will whet uh, the appetite uh, for folks out there to find out more about ORAN technology itself and certainly uh, the Marvell portfolio and what it uniquely brings to ORAN innovation as well as advancing uh, the overall uh, 5G ecosystem. And with that, uh, thank you again all and see you next time. Thank you very much.